A little earlier, I spoke to Caroline Noakes, the chair of the Women and Equalities Select Committee. Look, I think it's um, imperative that at a time like this, when there are clearly heightened tensions, that we're all careful about our language, that we all think about what we can do to bring communities together rather than drive them apart. And I very much hope that the Prime Minister at least speaks to the Home Secretary to explain the very significant concerns that are being raised across the party about the sort of language she has used over the past few days. So do you think that she is driving communities apart, as you put it? I think that the language that the Home Secretary has used has been misjudged. I am very worried that we will see heightened tensions this weekend on Armistice Day and Remembrance Sunday, which actually are times that we should all be able to come together as communities to commemorate those who gave their lives for us in war. And I just think that the Home Secretary could have thought more closely before she used the language that she did. I guess there will be people listening to us tonight who think they agree with Swella Braverman, that, you know, when she says people who vandalise the cenotaph should be jailed, when she criticises the way that the Met Police protest, there will be some people who think, yeah, she's right, isn't she? Well, this is the beauty of our democracy, isn't it, that we have freedom of speech, that we can all disagree, we can hold different views, we can uh, go on marches to highlight what our particular political or, uh, or other sort of opinion is, but it's crucially important that when we do that, we disagree in a respectful and uh, cordial manner. And I think that's the important thing, is that if there are protests, that they should be peaceful. Uh, if we're going to complain and disagree with other uh, individuals, that we should try to do so in a respectful manner. And I think that's the challenge that we're facing at the moment with the heightened tensions that we're seeing around the globe. It's a challenge to the Prime Minister as well, isn't it, though? Um, you know, putting the rights and wrongs to one side. Number 10 requested changes to an article written by the Home Secretary, and she ignored number 10. I mean, there's no way Look, that she could let her stay, right? I don't know what the ins and outs were of the drafting of the article, whether it was approved by number 10 or not. I've had a, a busy constituency day. It may surprise you I haven't been following the Westminster gossip at all. Well, that's what number 10 are saying. They said that they requested changes and that they, didn't, they weren't made. Well, look, this is a matter that the Prime Minister and the Home Secretary need to resolve between themselves. And to be quite frank, I am absolutely convinced that they're not listening to mere backbenchers like me tonight. Oh, I don't know, Caroline. Don't do yourself down. Um, just finally, um, I was just thinking, you know, um, you're talking there about the divisions between communities and the language, the importance of language that people use. You know, you stood unsuccessfully uh, as an MP in 2001 and 2005. Now, that, that was at a time when, if you think about it, the Conservatives were perhaps seen as the nasty party. Are you worried that that might be happening again? And what does it mean for your electoral prospects? Well, look, I will continue doing exactly what I do day in, day out, 365 days of the year. I'll do my best to represent the people of Romsey and Southampton North to the best of my ability. Um, to be quite frank, I have been a Conservative candidate under many different leaders over the past, uh, gosh, you know, well in excess of 20 years now. Uh, and I think what matters is that I have the integrity to stand up for what I believe in, to support my constituents and to work incredibly hard. And I know up and down the country, that's what my fellow Conservative MPs are all doing.